this is what we've got so far and we're setting ourselves up we really haven't done that much in JavaScript uh, we started to set up a couple of things the important things are these two lines here creating two objects two variables okay well what I want is when a person clicks the um, the save button the submit button I want it to do something so next line uh, I'll do two line two two lines to make an empty line um, just to space it out a little we will say event listener for when a person clicks the save button So basically, we need to write some JavaScript that pays attention to the moment that a person clicks the button. Right now, JavaScript is not paying attention to that. And when you try to click Save, it seems to like reset and kick you out of the app. Back to Welcome. Well, we're going to write an event listener. Listen for the event that the person clicks the button. That's going to be written by, again, object dot method well we made up our own object here dollar l form or fm save uh, save comment oh this is really cool here actually the comment that we wrote above it also pops up on a little pop-up that's smart creates variables to store it looks so fancy and official but we wrote that didn't we so l fm save comic that's the object that we invented there is a method. Usually you don't invent your own methods. The actual commands, there's like, you know, 200 of them built in. You usually don't make your own methods. You make your own objects. We have a method called submit. Bind an event handler to the submit JavaScript event or trigger that event. Okay, so basically when you, when a person presses the submit button of this object, do the following. This is going to get more complex than then this other part here where we had these other parentheses write a message somewhere here's the message what well, is more complex when you submit a form do the following we're going to do a series of steps we need to read what was written into those fields process them somehow and then display them on screen we need to run a function a function is a collection of many commands into one uh, into one object. So we'll start off with function. This is going to look a little weird, so open close parentheses, open close curly brace. You may have never really used the curly brace pair before, but it is found right next to the P key and the backslash on your keyboard. If you just press the key, you get brackets, square brackets. You need to do shift um, shift curly bracket there, brackets or braces, but it has to be typed in a very specific way. So, again, to back up, we've got the parentheses related to the method of submit. And then we've got some keyword function with its own parentheses, and then curly braces. So when I, when I write code, when I teach about writing code, I almost always write the pair of things and then fill in the detail because it's very easy to start writing it at this point here function get blah 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 and then I forget to type the rest and my code is broken so I always write the pair of things function parentheses event one of the reasons why the whole screen seems to reset is that the default behavior of a form was first to reset the screen because forms have been around literally like 30 years in programming in, in HTML and they first assumed that a person submitted something you pressed um, submit and the screen would refresh it would reload to something else well we don't need that to happen here because it's all running inside of this one project so this event is causing a problem the event of refreshing is causing a problem which we'll deal with in a moment. Next we will write fn save comic parentheses. We have fm as our prefix to say this is based this is related to a form something called save comic a form save comic fn for function 
Uh, I will write a comment in a moment, but again, a function is a collection of commands. So we're about to run a function. We're, we're about to run a collection of commands. And then also event inside of those parentheses. This is again the comparison. JavaScript is just more complex, more text, more wordy, more, more, more complexity. But all of this is to set up. This is all to set up that button to do something. We're almost there, another thing. Let's then say function. Uh, this is outside of, yes, outside of it on the next line. Fn save comic, parentheses, curly braces. Define our function. a collection of commands. A function is a collection of commands. We invent our own functions to do a bunch of things. I want, let's say I'm making a game. I want a function that is in charge of checking, did you get the high score? That function has to check things. What is the current high score? Compare it with the, I mean, what is your current score? Compare it with the high score. If you have more than the high score, great. Put your name on the screen, play a sound, put a message, congratulations. Or else you don't have the high score, do a different sound, do a different message. So a function is a series of steps all kind of grouped together, a series of commands. We have to then say also, like I had above there, event. There is an event that happens in the moment that you click the button. So up here we're saying, let's run a function called this, which could be called kitty cat. Let's run a function. Let's define. That's what the function means. Okay, further, between these curly braces, let's break those curly braces to the next line. Press Enter one time. And usually what I like to do is put end function save comic. You can lose track of your code very easily. This code is, uh, is about 100 lines long. It's a very, very small app. Usually you're dealing with thousands of lines. But when you have that line all by itself there throughout your hundreds of lines of code, you're going to lose track of what does that curly brace connect to? <laughs> So imagine I'm scrolling and there it is by itself. What does that mean? What does it connect to? Yes, you can you know, put your, put your mouse on it and it will highlight it here and highlight its pair. That's nice. But one quick way that I like to do this is I like to put that comment right there because it, um, I will then be able to see. That's supposed to be the end of my function, save, save comic. And now, in the curly braces, this will be a bunch of steps, a bunch of commands that will run at the moment we click Submit. One thing first is event.prevent default parentheses. Event.prevent default. The purpose of this is st stops the refresh of the screen. So up here we're saying, when a person clicks Submit, run a function, save comic, and capture or pay attention to the event that just happened. The event is the screen will refresh. OK, so then the code jumps to this part. OK, the way function save comic works is defined right here. And first of all, we're saying that event, refresh, prevent it. Don't refresh the screen. Don't kick us out of the app. Continue running the code. And continuation will be console log. And the way I usually teach this is to also have a quick message right here. Fn save comic is running. This is just a message that will happen in the console F12. 
that when I press the button to submit, I should get the feedback in the console, this function is running. This doesn't do anything yet for our main app yet, but especially as a beginner, you always want to save and test your code. You want to have points where you can stop to confirm that your code works. Uh, quick show of hands, how many of you have ever written any JavaScript before? Okay, two people. That means most of us are starting off brand new. So it really behooves us to stop and test our code, to check that it should do what we need. Question. That's where in most of the commands, when you're in the parentheses, you have to use quotes. Mm. But in the function one, you didn't. Is there... Is there there is definitely a, per a reason why we use quotes versus not using quotes. Mm -hmm. It's a little too complex to talk about at the moment, but okay. one is that usually in the function you don't use it, but the big difference is this is a string and this is an object. What does that mean? Again, we don't have a lot of time to get into those details, but sometimes we need to display a message as is, so quotes. And sometimes we need to use the object, so no quotes, but there's more complexity to that. So sometimes when you're learning this stuff, when I teach this, I usually say, we'll cover that later. Okay, that's I, I just didn't know if, if I was missing something, so that... No, but that is a good eye there, because we use quotes everywhere else, but not here. But yeah, the thing is that this is an object compared to that's a string, it's a word. Okay. That's an object. Let's save it and run it. Let's press F12 in the console. Let's press the button a few times and see if you get the feedback in your console that tells you function save comic is running. So you have to press the button to save and then that's when it will react because we've programmed that, that after you click after you click save you'll see the message. This message won't appear until this function runs. This function doesn't run until you submit the form. Try that. Click that Save button on the form and see if you get the message. I'll be there. Okay, I'll, I'll be with you one moment. Let me just confirm mine works, and if yours doesn't, I'll be right there. What's supposed to happen is if I go to my Save screen and I click Save, I get the feedback that says your function is running, whatever we put there in the message. So if it didn't quite do it, let me do a little pause here. This is what our code looks like so far.
Did that work for everyone so far? So all of this is to set up the button to do something. You, we're seeing here that, yeah, JavaScript is, is more than HTML. And one misplaced command breaks it. Not just one misplaced command, one misplaced character breaks it. If I forgot this curly brace, this one character right here, which is just one byte of data, that breaks the whole thing. That's just the nature of these more complex languages. And it's also not forgiving in terms of capitalization. No. If I do prevent default lowercase, it won't work. Yeah, exactly. So if your colors look very different than mine, that's also an indicator something's not quite right. The colors are not just for like pretty colors, which actually doesn't change here, but it should. Um, the colors are not just there as a, you know, pretty indicators. They, they tell you this is this type of thing or that type of thing. The gold colors are usually this string data, and then these uh, methods are purple, and then these 
uh, you know, uh, uh, keywords are blue and so forth. So if your colors are very different than mine, that's one indicator something's off. Okay, so moving on here, we've confirmed that at least when you press the button, you get the message that says this function is running. Now what we need to do is create variables for each of the input fields in the form. Based on what we've already done, we have the knowledge to do that. Plus one more thing. We have, we create a variable, dollar symbol. These things can be called anything you want because you're inventing them, but I'm going to call this uh, val input name. These things can be called anything you want. I called the previous one up here L because there is an element in the HTML called FM Save Comic. I'm calling this val because I want the value of something called input name. So just like above, we will then say equals the jQuery selector. Let's go find something, which is uh, dollar parenthesis semicolon. Let's go find something, the something like above, something with an ID of something. So all of those input fields that we made had IDs Again, just to set myself up in two, two views right here. Up above, we had these input fields with these two IDs. Right here. The, the form... The form has an input field of ID, input name, input number, input year. So in our jQuery selector here, quotes pound input name go search for something with an ID of input name and store it in a variable in an object we just invented but I want specifically the value so one more thing here before the ending semicolon dot val val get the current value of the first element in the set of matched elements parentheses okay so we're technically still dealing with object dot method we're using the jQuery selector to go find an object temporarily use the method val give me the value of what you type into the box store it in this object, and now I have a way to work with the name of the comic they typed. I need to do the exact same thing for the number and the year. Based on that line we wrote right there, you should be able to do it. No, it just says, give me the value of what's in there. Question? What's that? You have three parentheses. Three parentheses? Yeah, no. So one is not matching. Uh huh. Why did I put an extra one in there? Um, I guess I typed it too fast. Yeah, that makes sense. Good. So two parentheses for dot val. That extra one I don't know where it came from. But then we've got those two right here. Okay. So what I was about to say was, based on this line right here, you should be able to do the next two for number and year. No joke. Look at it exactly what we've got there. You should be able to reason out what is my next command. I'll start writing it. VAR, I'm going to create another variable. I can call it whatever I want. Based on what I called the previous one, dollar $val input number is equal to dollar $val input number is equal to jQuery selector. We've done this a few times. Okay, searching for something. Quotes, pound, input number, dot val. Give me the value of that object. Store it in this variable. Uh, 
pound input number. Capitalization does matter. So if above, up here, you spelled it with capital input, capital number, then down here you have to also mention it as capital input, capital number. Up here I wrote it with lowercase input, uppercase number. That's how I also write it down here. And then dot val. And then again, the third one. I, I don't have to write it. You should be able to do it. I'll write it in a moment, but you should be able to do the third one. It's exactly the same as the first two. To confirm that that part of the code works, in the console, I'm going to output what's inside of each of these variables. The point is that I've created these variables, and they're supposed to store, be storing something. So console log is show me something in the console. Well, the idea is, again, if we read to the right, from the right to the left, let's get the value of this input field and store it in this object, console. Show me the, in the console what's in that variable. No quotes. We'll see why in a moment. And then, OK, now show me the, the value of the number in the console. Well, number comes from uh, the value of that object up there and the value of that one, etc. So to test if this works now, what you can do is when you save it and run it, type something into those fields, whatever you want, but type something into those fields, click the Save button, and in the console, you should see what you typed in each of those three boxes in the console. So try that. Let me, run, let me run mine just to confirm and to show you what it should look like. As soon as I open my project, I'll press F12. I'll go to home. I'll type something here. Spider-Man number one, 1963. I'll click Save. And then in my output, it says the function is running, line 116. In line 124, it shows the, the comic name that I typed, 125 the number, 126, the year. Yep, and every time I do it again, Spider-Man number one, 1991, save that, and then it reads it again, it runs the function again, it reads what's in those boxes again, and then puts it out in the console again. That's what that looks like so far. Anyone having any trouble? It should show you your those messages.
everyone so if it um, if you are getting some output right there we are seeing that our button is live so when we press the button it will uh, it will react the way we've got it reacting is step one we prevent the screen from refreshing step two check the values of those input fields and store them step three put it in the console now this also doesn't have any quotes like we had before when we had console output we had it in quotes well, here, we're not trying to display literally the message, hello. We're trying to display what's in the object, so no quotes. We could have a little quick comment just for us here. Uh, with quotes displays a literal message. Without quotes displays what's in the object. So if you were curious, and you try to put the double quotes, if you put the quotes around it, it would say the message literally, val input name. It wouldn't show you what's in the object, it would just show you the name of the object. It's like if it was saying, if it was saying, you know, show me the object. Here it is, here's the object. No, show me what's in the object. So then you, you pour it out. So um, that's the difference between, uh, one of the differences with quotes. Now, that what we wanted to do is to start to display this on screen. And um, the way this will work is we already have a, a space, a place for us that will display stuff on screen uh, visually for the user. We have on the view screen, we have a table. We have something that will have rows and columns. We have a column of name, a column of number, a column of year. If I type in Spider Man number one, 1963, I want the new row, Spider Man number one, 1963. And I add another one, Wonder Woman number one, 1941. So then the next one, Wonder Woman number one, 1941. So I want to add to what's already there. That was related to when we did document.write, it didn't know where to write it. Well, to back up on our code, just to show you, you don't have to go yourself, but over on, where is this at? Over on line, uh, line 69, 71, and 72, you've got these, you've got these, lines of HTML code that says, okay, there is a temporary div placeholder called div show. Inside of it, there is a table. There's a table with a border of one within, with a certain 
ID to identify it. And then there is a row. There is a row in this table that has a name, a year, it has a name, a number, and a year. So that's what I see when I look at it in the browser. I've got a table with one border around it, one pixel border around it. I've got one row, and in that particular row, there's a column for name, number, year. I want to add a new row. If I was writing this in HTML, so don't do this, but if I was writing a new row, I would do this. Make a new row, make a new cell, call it Spider-Man, make a new cell, again, don't write this, number one, make a new cell, 1963. So I, I wrote there, I made a brand new cell, Spider-Man number one. Well, that's me writing it manually like that. I don't want that. I want the person to type the name of the comic and it automatically makes a row and fills in the right cells. So that's what the JavaScript is about to do right here. I have identified where something will happen, and then I need to write the code to do something there. So continuing our code, we'll say, we'll write it this way maybe, um, find the div where the table is at add to after the last row add a new row data. One of the ways that you are successful in a programming language is that if you can translate the human readable commands into the computer readable commands. Because what I'm trying to do here makes sense if I tell people, well, I need to look up the proper JavaScript code to do these things. How do I find something? How do I uh, identify the last item? How do I add something to it? We've done some of these finding things. We've done this a few times with that dollar selector. We haven't done this one yet or this one yet. That's the thing about these languages. If you can uh, explain it in a human language and then figure out how do I write that in the computer language of choice, you will succeed. So here's what we start to do. The finding part is the jQuery selector. And then dot after insert content specified by the parameter after each element. Okay, so in this case, again, find something. There's our finder, dot after method, after the last row, add something to it. And again, there's all of these commands built in, and you don't have to have them all memorized, but I need to find a way to add something before it. Hmm, maybe I look it up, or maybe I reason, is there a before command? Probably. So the search here is going to go find something. Um, quotes pound div show. Okay, so we're saying, go find something with an, with an ID of div show. Okay, check. Now, here's something new. Space, this is still inside of the quotes. Because then now, let's go find specifically this table. This table has that ID. So first we're saying, let's go find a div named a certain way. Next we're going to say, space pound table comics. That space in that case is very important. A lot of times spacing in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript doesn't matter too much, except when it matters a lot. And it matters a lot right here. This space is very important because this is saying this, this is, a, is a child element of a parent element. This thing is inside of this thing, and we specify that with a space. There are other characters that we can use to get specific and so forth, but in short, reading from right to the left. This thing is inside of this thing. That space matters. Okay. Well, 
Next, to be even more specific, space tr colon last. Go find the last row in this table in this div. That's what this command is saying right there. So if there's last, yes, there's probably a first. And you can also do even and odd and all of these, all this fancy stuff. Again, you don't have to have it all memorized. You just have to know how to look it up. So um, we're finding where we need to do it after the last one. After, let's write something. The something is, like I started to manually write up here a brand new row in the, per in the parentheses of after quotes. A row in a table is made out of the tags tr. In the quotes here, we'll start the tr pair. The very first row is special because you usually have headings, and that's what I have up there. th name, th number, th year. That's my headings of that first row. Regular cells are td, table data. So we say td, td. Now this is cutting off here. OK, so we're creating a brand new row with a new cell that lines up vertically with the first cell over here, name. And just, um, just to, because this is going to cut off at the edge here. Can we turn off the word wrap? Word wrap. So uh, dollar $val input name is the variable, is the object holding the name of what they typed. We confirmed that when I type something in and click Submit, this would show me the name in the console. OK, so this is storing the name of their comic. Let's make a brand new row with a brand new cell, put the name of their comic. Another cell to put the number of their comic. Another cell to put the year of their comic. Each cell is made out of a pair with TD, which is in a TR, T table row. So another TD pair, because then this will display the value of the input field of number. So um, we've got a brand new row. It starts here, it ends here. So we've got a brand new cell. Cell 1 lines up with the first cell up there. We've got a new cell, lines up with the second cell, the value input number. OK, I need a third cell. So another TD pair. This is the, this is the point where, again, I, I would recommend to write the pair so you don't, you don't lose track of it. I know that in between what's going to go but I want to write the pair first so that I don't lose track of it. There's a new starting cell, there's a new ending cell, and then in between, val input year. Val input year. So in total, this is saying, let's write some HTML after the thing that we found, the last row. And so far, there's only one row in that table. Where did this go? Right there. So that, uh, that table has one row so far. After the, uh, go find the last row, and then let's write some code after it. Let's make a new row with this stuff. Save it and run it. If you know a little bit about JavaScript, maybe you're biting your tongue, please continue to do so because we're not quite there yet. I'm going to save it and run it. I'm going to save a comic and then I'm going to go view the comics. Let's see what we get. 
So I'll press F12, okay. I'm gonna save a comic. Spider Gwen number one, 2014. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna view that. Well, I got a new row. But it's saying literally the name of the variable, not what's in the variable. Close. If you're curious, what about if I save another comic? Let's see, Venom number one, uh, 2018. I'm gonna save that, view that. Well, I, I get another row, but I don't get the actual data. So the part of the code that says write a new row after the current row is working, at least. But my console shows, yeah, I, I wrote a new comic. I wrote a new comic, but it's not displaying on screen. This goes back to the idea again about the quotes. Something that is in quotes will literally appear on screen. Something without quotes will appear as what's in the object. So I don't want to display the, I don't want to display the object, I want to display what's in the object. Okay, so here's what we need to do to fix this up. It's very, very close, but here's what's, what's missing. We have this string, technically it's a string. Everything in quotes is a string. Everything in quotes is literally this. Now up here, it makes more sense when I have the message, function save comic is running. That is the name of a, of a function I invented, but it's not being, it's not running it, it's just showing you the name of the function, because it's in quotes. Over here, when we displayed what's in the comics, no quotes. If I had those in quotes, it would display literally the name of the variable, but not what's in the variable. That's exactly what we've got in this line we just wrote here. Start the quote. Start the row, start the cell, show that. Let me show you what it needs to be. Don't write it yet, just watch this. We need to say, stop the quote, and then start JavaScript, and then continue HTML. So we've got some static HTML that doesn't change. I always want the row, I always want to see. And then I want JavaScript that will change every time. And then I want to continue HTML. So let me back that up and we'll do it together. Yes, this is pretty complex. So all of it is one string. We're going to say right after create a row, create a cell, and then stop HTML, end quote. End quote because we started a quote over here. Sorry, quote, end quote. Space plus, the plus symbol. Space. All right, so now we're saying start some HTML. Anything inside of after assumes HTML. So start some HTML. Stop the HTML. And then add JavaScript. And then continue HTML. So after val input name, space plus, Space quote, be careful here, it might give you double quotes like it did to me. You want one quote, one quote, not double. Start HTML, stop HTML, and then JavaScript, and then back to HTML, and then stop HTML, and then JavaScript, and then HTML, and then stop it again, and then start it again. But I'll do that in a moment. If you save it and run it right now, if you've got it, if you can confirm this works when you save it and run it, it should make new row after new row with your comic name. Not with the number yet, because we need to do the same trick here that we did there. Not with your year yet, because we need to do the same thing. But at the moment, at least, it should show your names of the comics. And I'll come back one moment. So if I do Spider-Man number one, view, it says Spider-Man. If I do Spider-Gwen number one, and save that, it says Spider-Gwen. 
if I say venom, save that, it says venom. The other ones are still literally showing just the name of the variable, of course, because I haven't done the, the quote trick like I will do in a moment. This is correct so far. Um, not working? Both of you not working? Okay, let me be there one moment, then we'll continue. Uh, so it is, it is a little odd, but here's our code so far. It has to be typed exactly perfectly. Thank you. 
Okay, so continuing here, you might have already done the last part necessary. If not, well, here's the last part necessary. If we've got TR, open a TD, then display the dynamic data, then close the TD. Okay, well, we've got the same thing here. Start a TD, display dynamic stuff, go back to HTML. So after this, after this TD, we're saying, okay, stop the HTML plus and then the JavaScript. After that JavaScript, space plus continue quote. Again, be careful here. It's putting two quotes from me. That's not right. One quote. Because uh, then we're saying continue with HTML. So start some HTML and then JavaScript and then HTML and then JavaScript and then HTML and then JavaScript and then HTML. So we're going back and forth between those, and that's very, very common to do. There is static stuff, stuff that doesn't change. I always need to create these cells that won't change. But what's dynamic is what did they type into those boxes? And those boxes are stored in these variables. So again, stop the HTML, and then continue the JavaScript, and then stop the JavaScript, and then continue the HTML. So all of that continues there. Be careful, double quotes. And so we've got that going on there. You start it, stop it, back and forth, back and forth. All of that then is, uh, if I save it and run it, and I save a bunch of comics, now every row should properly fill in every time you save something. Let's see here. So I'm going to save that. Again, we're not complex enough that every time I refresh it, it remembers what I did previously. We're not going to get to that, really. That's more complex. But if I save a comic right now, like this. So I've added it, and now it says the name of it, the year of it, the, the number. I want to change the colors and make the table bigger and all of that. That's CSS. We won't quite get to that. Not necessary for the assignment. If I add another comic, save that. So it's reading all of these values and then putting them out on the table. And every time we have something new, it'll add new to it. So I save the new one, and I view it there. And so the table changes by what's inside of it. We have a way to control it via CSS. Uh, at the moment, it is displaying what I want it to do. But one little, one little thing here, if I want to add my next comic at the moment I have I either have to delete what's in a box or click clear wouldn't it be nice that as soon as I type something here and save it it clears itself so that I don't have to do it myself of course we have code that will let us do that so going back to our code we'll say after after this last line here next line we'll say now clear the inputs for new comics. Well, after we, we read what's in it, and then we display, clear those fields so that the person can type something new. And that is going to be $L form save comic. The object of the form square brackets 0 that's a square bracket not a uh, curly bracket so we have that object dot reset there is some form let's reset it that makes sense it's like pressing the clear button and um, That's a little bit of help for the user instead of them manually having to backspace it away or pressing clear. That's like pressing the clear button, but through code. So 
So this, this is what I, I wanted to do at the moment for the lecture. If you're able to get this working, you are, you are on track for the homework. The homework will have you do your own version, uh, you know, save comic or save music or save video games or save movies or whatever thing, whatever hobby you might want to do, but you're going to need to, um, you know, there's a logo missing on the, on that welcome screen. You need to put some kind of graphic there. That's basic HTML. You need to set it up to make sure you've got this input form with at least of these three inputs. You can do more if you want, if you want to go further. You need to have the clear button work. You need to have the save buttons the save button work. You need to be able to view your results in the view screen if all of that works. If you've added the extra things that I also mentioned in Canvas. If you also, up on this pop-up, we didn't touch, it, touch upon it at all, if you can figure out how do I go in here and change that. That'll be some credit there actually. And anything you want to change to make it more your own. But the, the big idea is an intro to JavaScript. So if you go back to Canvas, you'll see the full details of the assignment, which will be due on Monday of next week. I'm going to end the lecture in a moment and do some lab time in case it doesn't fully work. But that's what I want to touch on today for JavaScript. We made this project that was, how far did we get? 140, 140 lines or so. A small program. Uh, it's much more common to have thousands of lines. If you take my other, if you take my other classes, um, we get much, much more complex. That's the big idea there. Check Canvas for the full details. You'll have time to get started today. It'll be due Monday. If it didn't work, let's, let's do a little bit of help. Uh, any general questions about what the homework is or what you learned and such? General questions? Okay, well, this lecture, I recorded it. I uploaded it. Check Canvas to go to the link to rewatch it if you need to. We'll have some lab time until 4 if you need it.